Welcome to Right Way Ministries. For the next 30 minutes, you will learn God's Word and what He requires of you. And now, here is your speaker, Gilbert Vincent. Praise the name of the Lord. Grace be with you out there in peace from God the Father, from Jesus His Son, and from the seven spirits that are burning brightly before His throne. This week we're going to be talking about uh, something that's very uh, important for you to know because what I'm going to talk about happened even before this world was formed. But you've got to know right from the beginning what's going on. And you won't know anything be unless you fear the Lord because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You won't even begin to know until you fear the Lord. So what I have to talk about is very, very important because the devil made before this universe the devil was made without fear. And that's why he fell, and that's why you need to fear God, or you likewise will fall. As it is written, how art thou fallen, O Lucifer? You don't want to fall for the same mistake. So you need to feast on the word of the living God. I was saying, when you make a feast, call them that can't pay you back. I'll pay you off in resurrection. So I'm, I'm calling a feast today. I'm going to read into the Word of God some important things that you need to know. And these secrets belong to us and to our children because they're secrets of God, but there's nothing kept secret. But it should come abroad. When the Lord shows you something, you're supposed to tell the world, let your light shine. But you aren't going to know anything unless you ask God to show you. He said, call upon me, and I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. You want to know great and mighty things that you don't know so far? You want them to get entrenched in your body and soul so that you can keep them, keep this knowledge, and be health to you, make you strong? Well, you've got to ask God to give it to you. For the Lord giveth knowledge. Out of, he giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So we're going to be reading out of the Word of God today, but before we do, we're going to go up to the throne of the living God and ask him to pour out abundantly of his Holy Spirit and bless the message today. Join, join me in prayer, because he said, with two or more gather in my name, I'm right there in the midst. The needs to get together with other God-fearing people and call out to God. That's how Jesus instructed us to pray. He said, this man ought you to pray, our Father. We've got to pray together. So join me in prayer as we ask the Lord to give life to these words. Heavenly Father, Lord, and Master, in the name of your Son, Jesus, we ask you to pour out your Spirit on us. Make known these words to us, Father. Put them on our hearts by the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, we claim it, will not be denied. We receive with meekness the engrafted word that's able to save our souls, and we thank you for it. We praise you for it. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're ready to receive something from God now. I'm going to turn you to a scripture in Job. The scripture is chapter 41 of Job, verse 33. And the Lord said, Hast thou considered my servant Job? You ought to read Job more often. You ought to consider him. That there, he's perfect now, perfect and upright man. None, none like him. One that fears God and is Jews evil. Consider that, God says. Have you considered him? Well, let's consider what he has to say now. And actually, this is the Lord talking in the book of Job. In verse 33, it says, Upon earth there is none his like who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He's a king over all, A double L. All the children of pride. That's the devil. The devil is not like him. And he was made without fear. But you aren't. No, the Lord founded this whole world through the fear of the Lord. It's by wisdom hath he founded the earth. He made it that way. Because the devil, without fear of God, led one third of the angels out of their place. They had mansions in heaven. They were created by God to be ministering spirits, to do his bidding. He sitteth on the throne in the heavens, and they stand in his presence. 
But one third of them didn't stand around. They followed, they listened to Lucifer, the prettiest one, because he had no fear of God. And they listened to him and followed him. And now they can't get back. There's vacancies up in heaven. They're kicked out. Their places are empty, swept, and garnished. And that's why Jesus came to earth to tell you, I got good news. In my father's house are many mansions. It's a lot of vacancies. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So he's preparing that place for those of us who, through fear of God, will continue in well-doing and not faint and overcome all things to stand before the Son of Man and work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Those are the tools to get the job done. But the devil was made, as we read here, without fear. And because of that, he beholdeth all high things. He's high-minded. The Bible says, be not high-minded, but fear. But he doesn't fear, so he's high-minded. He's a king over the children, all the children of pride. You're not supposed to be proud of anything but God. Yourself, you're supposed to deny yourself. You're supposed to confess uh, that you don't know anything but Jesus Christ as Lord and him crucified. That's the one you know. That's the one you need to know and confess that you got to deny yourself and follow the Lord. Pick up the cross and follow the Lord. That's right. But the devil didn't want to do that. He led one third of the angels in rebellion. They're not ministering spirits to minister to God anymore. They're unclean spirits. They're filthy, vulgar. They're, they're, they're grotesque. And they're in chains to darkness. They can't come to the light. And they take forms like a serpent. You know, he uh, was made to sliver on the ground. God didn't even give him a knee to repent on. He can't repent. Because God said, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. But not him. He doesn't have a knee to repent on. And that's why you need to fear God because he didn't fear God you need to fear God it's your whole duty it'd be different if it was just it'd be nice if you would fear no 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 it's the whole duty of man why because Satan didn't fear God therefore it's important for you too so because he didn't fear God he started becoming high-minded and proud and you have to turn to Isaiah to find out what happened to him. Because Jesus himself said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. It was quick. Lightning so quick, you don't even realize it. Lightning actually begins from the ground and goes up, makes contact. You just see it coming back down. But it actually starts down and tries to go up. And it gets thrown down. Well, Jesus beheld Satan as lightning thrown down. He said, don't rejoice that you get power over him but that your name's written in heaven. Well, how do you get your name written in heaven? Well, you talk often one to another about the fear of the Lord. The Lord hearkens, he says, and writes you down in the book of remembrance so he can't forget you. But the nations that forget God, well, forget them. They're not in the book. They get turned into hell with Satan. It was prepared for Satan and his angels. It was prepared for them because they didn't have the fear of God and they left their place. Well, keep your place in, before God in, in humbleness and singleness of heart before the Lord, and the Lord will bring you up in due time. But no, he wanted to go before the time, okay? And here's what happened. Chapter 14 of Isaiah, verse 12 reads, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. That's the judgment written. That's what's going to happen to the devil. Why? Because he chose not the fear of the Lord. 
He was not made with it. He didn't have it. And an example had to be made out of him. The angels desire to look into the things that we know about, that we have. We have the fear of the Lord, and they don't. They don't have this gift. It says in Job earlier that it was kept close from the fowls of the air. God likens the angels to fowls. They got wings. The evil fowls, angels, gobble up the word of God. The fowls come and devour it because they don't want anybody. They don't want the word of God to take root in you and bring forth fruit and bring forth other God-fearing Christians. They don't want that to happen. So they want to gobble up the word of God. They want to destroy, lest you be fruitful and multiply and fill the face of the earth with fruit. And that fruit takes their place in heaven. They don't want that to happen, all the devils. But God, through wisdom, founded the earth. David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And God said when he made it that way in fear of God, he made it by wisdom. He says, behold, it is good. And he says, he taketh pleasure in them that fear him. Because all things were created for his pleasure. He created it for his pleasure. So you want God to form you a vessel into honor, not into dishonor. And you do that by fearing God and allowing him to work through you. If you allow the Lord to work through you, he'll mold you and make you into a vessel of honor. But if you choose not to fear the Lord, the Lord says he'll mock you. Because you didn't choose the good and refuse the evil. It's evil not to fear the Lord. Look at what happened to Lucifer. Very evil. So evil that God prepared a lake of fire for him and all his angels. But anybody who wants to follow him and do his bidding, and do his teaching, they go there. In fact, any man on earth, there's two people on earth that are definitely going to do his bidding instead of God's bidding. They're going to deceive the world by flappers. They're going to corrupt the world. Tell everybody they're beautiful Christian people. This false prophet and the beast. Now, in the, throughout the history of the world, there were two people that God loved so much. God Almighty, honest on just couldn't wait. He had to take them alive into heaven. They didn't die. They didn't see death. They were just translated right up into the kingdom of God. God loved them so much. They, were, they feared God and did his bidding. And they were warning others that, that all the ungodly were going to be destroyed and to fear God. So he took him right, Enoch and Elijah, just translated right up into heaven. Didn't see death. Well, in like manner, there's two dudes that God hates so much that they don't die and go down to hell. They get thrown alive into the lake of fire prepared for Satan and his angels a thousand years before Satan himself. They're the first ones in. Satan himself, it was prepared for him. He doesn't get thrown in there until a thousand years later where the beast and the false prophet are. That's where he gets thrown in. They're still there a thousand years later. So these two characters don't die, pass, go, collect 200. They go straight to jail. And why? Because they did his bidding. They sat in the sides of the north in Jerusalem, in the mount of the congregation, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, that he's infallible. No, God is true in every man a liar. And if you fear God, you can bind kings with fetters. You can bind them with the word of God. What's bound on earth, it's bound in heaven. Well, this word came from heaven, that all men are liars. You can bind kings that say they're infallible with the word of God and say, no, you're a liar, but God is true. And that's your testimony. You testify that God is true. Well, now the devil is up before the throne of God, day and night, accusing you. Say, well, he can't fear God because, funny, he didn't accuse Job, though, did he? He had nothing to accuse Job of because Job feared God and eschewed evil. So Satan couldn't, couldn't accuse him. But, but Satan is constantly coming to God, trying to get at the ones that fear God. And so that's why his continual coming, God said, okay, go have, have at him. 
But you watch. He's still going to fear me, and it's still evil. And so here's this little imp, this little frog-like spirit. Move the almighty creator of the universe that sitteth on the throne to destroy his faithful servant, Job, without a cause. There was no cause. It wasn't because Job was wrong. It wasn't a cause. It's just by Satan's continual coming. If he can get God to move against his own righteous, how much more shall he, God, avenge his elect if you cry out to him like the devil does, though he may along with you? You've got to cry out for justice and judgment. You've got to cry out for what's right. When you see something's wrong, you've got to cry out against it. Say, I protest. That is wrong. Hmm. And you can't be a hypocrite. If you're a Protestant, you need to protest. Why are Protestants called protests? Because they protested against the doctrines of the Vatican. They said, this is totally against the word of God. We protest. And they broke away because they knew it was not right. And why did they do that? In fear of God more than in fear of the governments. In fear of burning at the stake. In fear of imprisonments and all this. No, they feared God more. Now, many of them were burned at the stake. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> many of them. But they nevertheless kept their testimony. They died for their testimony. And others grew up in their place. And some men's good works they follow after. Other men followed after when they saw that it was worth dying for. And when they realize there's nothing they can do, they're protesting a little too loud, they're quoting the word of God a little too strict and straight for us, then a place was found for them. God moved on kings and allowed the Protestant Reformation to come to pass. Plus, the Lord allowed inventions like the Gutenberg printing press to start cranking out Bibles in different languages so that people could get the word of God and realize how they have to fear God and not man. Because the Bible says the fear of man bringeth a snare. And it said, as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the earth. You can't fear man, you've got to fear God, not man. If you fear man, you'll be snared into their snare. And who snares you? Who lays a snare for you? It says, he that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a snare for his feet. And that's how the Antichrist has taken over the whole world. Well, you can tell by, if you've checked into these programs, just like the Apostle Paul, might be a little crude in speech, but, but I'm telling you what the Word of God says, straight out of the Word of God, out of fear of it. Knowing the terror of God, I persuade you this is what God says, okay? And neither at any time you should be flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak of covetous. God is witness. You don't see me with a cloak of covetous. And they're saying, look, uh, you got to send money here if you want my messages or you want my tapes or my tracks or whatever. Never at any time. I don't have a cloak. I got the cloak of zeal, okay? The zeal of my father's house is eating me up. Can't stand these people selling all their goods and wares and all this kind of stuff. I got the cloak of zeal, the full armor of God. It's what I've got to have on so that I can stand against the wiles of the devil and having done all to stand, okay? But these people hung up their cloak of zeal and put on a cloak of covetous. Send 2,000 by the year 2,000 and God will bless you. He'll send angels to you. See, indulgences you would have thought when Martin Luther not nailed the 95 theses to the church door at Wittenberg, that, that was the end of indulgences. No, it's still alive and well, believe me, in many Protestant churches. They're selling indulgences. Said, you need my my tapes and my messages, and only for $29.95 you can have it. No. The Apostle Paul, who wrote more gospel and more epistles than all the apostles, 85% to be you know, exact, and all the apostles combined for 15, I think he labored more abundantly than they all. He said, what is my reward? He said, that I might make the gospel without charge. And I labored night and day, he said, that I wouldn't be chargeable among any of you. I ate my own bread. You know, I didn't charge you. Even in Rome, waiting to stand, he was sent to Rome as a prisoner, but even in Rome, waiting to stand before Nero, he dwelt two full years in his own hired house. He paid his rent, okay? He hired his own house. And he received, he preached the word of God, no man forbidding him. Why? 
because he feared God more than Nero. And while he was there, he paid his rent and preached the gospel. He said, well, speak the Holy Ghost to the Jews, you know. That seeing you'll see it, not understand. And you'll hear, but you won't, perce you won't perceive. He says, God, well, speak the Holy Ghost. Because that's, and that Holy Ghost spoke that through the same Isaiah, prophet Isaiah. And that is the most quoted scripture in the New Testament from the Old. Is out of Isaiah chapter 6, where it says, Give them eyes that don't see and ears the dull. But here, make the ears heavy. Just as in the days of Noah, so shall be in their last days. When in the days of Noah, their ears were heavy, they sunk like lead to the bottom when the floods over through the earth. No. You've got, you, you, if you've got a, the fear of the Lord, your ears will be open. And his ears open to your cries. He'll hearken to you if you talk about the fear of the Lord. He says so. But in Isaiah, the Lord was showing, at, Isaiah was allowed by God because he feared God. What the, how do you know Isaiah feared God? He's one of the experts of God. How do you know? Because he's, Isaiah said in the spirit, sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. Make him your fear. Make him your dread. So he's supposed to dread to displease the living God. And Isaiah wrote by the Spirit in chapter 33, verse 6. He says, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. That's your treasure, the fear of the Lord. Not your money. Come send $29.95. No, don't worry about that treasure. Worry about the fear of the Lord. That's your treasure. Have that. All things you can desire not to be compared to the fear of the Lord because that opens the key door of knowledge to you. Even the beginning had the fear of God. She said, we can't eat it neither. Can we touch it lest we die? The devil disarmed her of the fear of the Lord. He beguiled her out of it by saying, thou shalt not surely die. You don't have to fear God. You can get, gain knowledge of good and evil by eating this fruit. You don't have to fear God, even though he said not to do it. Do it. She tried to enter in without the key, because what is the key of knowledge? That the lawyers knew about, but they withheld from the people. And Jesus said, woe to your lawyers, you take away the key of knowledge. Well, you can't even begin to open the door without a key. Well, how do you get knowledge? It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You can't even begin to know without the fear of the Lord. Well, she cast off fear, restrained prayer from before God, and she went for the knowledge of evil another way. Anybody that tries to enter in any other way but by the door with the key is like to a thief and a robber. What happened to her? Well, she died, and guess what? We're her offspring. So oh, we got to die, too. I think it's pretty serious that you fear the Lord, that you receive the fear of the Lord in meekness of God, and go tell others they need to receive it in fear of God. And if you fear God, you receive whatever God says with meekness and fear, because you know it is indeed the Word of God. And it's made plain to the righteous. The, words are, the way of the righteous is made plain. You know, though it's a mountain before you, Lord will make it a plain. Why? Because you fear him. And he, he says, his secret's with them that fear him. He'll show you the secret to success. He'll show you the way through this way. But you've got to have your tools. You've got to serve him with fear. And you've got to rejoice. You've got to serve the Lord joyfully with trembling. That means you've got to shudder, shudder at the word of the living God. Those that tremble at my word, he loves them. He came down on a mountain and he said, Moses, I want you to put a board around the mountain. I'm coming down. I want to put my fear in their hearts that they don't sin against me. And he boomed down to him. And the whole, the whole camp quaked. Everybody was trembling. That's good. But then they said, no, we don't want to hear anymore. So Moses heard. And God says, man, get out the way, Moses. I'll destroy them and make of you a greater people. Ones that fear me. But Moses stood in the gap for him. He said, leave him alone. Just a little while longer. Let me see what I can do, please. You know, and God, so God sighed to Moses. I mean, he actually let his feelings out when he was talking to Moses. And he said, and I quote, oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me always, that it be well with them and their children forever. But they didn't have a heart to fear God. So God spoke through the prophet Zer Jeremiah he says, she'll come to pass, saith the Lord, I'll make a new covenant with them. Not like I make with their fathers when I brought them out of Egypt. Which covenant they break? I'll give them one heart 
in one way that they might fear me forever. That's what he said. He'll give them a heart to fear me. The other ones didn't have such a heart to fear him, and they broke his covenant. But he gives you a heart to fear him, you'll keep the covenant. And he says, I won't leave you to do you good. Nevertheless, he says, I will put my fear in your heart that you don't depart from me. Remember, the angels depart. That's why a woman's not supposed to depart from a man. God gave her hair as a covering because of the angels. They left their first place, their first estate, because they didn't have fear. That's why the woman, see that she reverence her husband. Now, all the modern-day heretics say fear really means reverence. No, it's just the opposite. Reverence means fear. Because that word, Greek word, it's the only time it's used, it says the woman see that she reverence her husband. That Greek word for reverence is phobia. That's right. You know, like hydrophobia, fear of water. Yeah, and the fear of heights. Well, yeah, you're supposed to have the fear of your husband. Because as Christ is supposed to be feared by his church, as the church is supposed to fear the, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice. And again, I say rejoice, with trembling. Even so, the wife is supposed to serve the husband in singleness of heart with fear and trembling. That's why the Lord likens the church as a bride. Christ is the bridegroom. Well, it's the same way for women. Why? Because of the angels. They didn't fear God and left. They desire to look into these things that you can behold right now. But if you don't pray, you don't receive anything. And, and if you don't thank God, you don't retain anything. Because it says in Romans, neither were they thankful. They knew the things of God that were hid from the creation of the world, being man manifest. Clearly seeing the invisible things was made clear to them. It was hid from all flesh. God said in Job 28, what was hid from all flesh? The way that no fowl knew. And what was that way? He said, behold, the fear of the Lord. That is the way. That is wisdom. That's the wise way. That's the ways a wise man builds his house on the fear of God. You need to do that. You need to build here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, old and new. You have to build on the entire word of God. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And if you search it out diligently, you'll see the, in the volume of the book, it's written of me, the wisdom of God, Jesus says, the fear of the Lord. It's all throughout. Don't be slack. It's a free gift to God, and God will give it to you liberally and upbraid you not. All you have to do is ask for wisdom. He'll give it to you liberally. But he have not because you ask. Ask, you shall receive. And then receive it with meekness, and it'll make you strong. And tune in again next week. Call that 800 number. 850-7448. Call that 800 number anytime. We'll be ready to answer you with meekness and fear. Because we fear God. We want you to know the truth. And until next time, praise the name of the Lord. If you would like to communicate with this ministry, write to Right Way Ministries at 4621 South Cooper, Box 131164, that's Box 131164, Arlington, Texas, 76017. Or call 1-800-850-7448. Remember, they that feared the Lord spake often one to another.